We got the railing guy on, putting railings on right now. I have a cabinet guy working. Finish the downstairs cabinets. I also have uh, the guy doing finishing floors and stuff. So the outside is done. If you want to see it now, see how the squares come out, right? See, it's center here. It's got still a bit of a character still. Nice day today. It's like spring. It's that kind of feel, like like a spring day. See how it comes out there. So it's not too bad. I wonder if I can stick that in my van right now. Worst case, I'll have to break it. Well, should actually come right out, actually. This will be scrap, anyways. There it is. So the fences, the fences on there should look good too. So you think these sub trays would clean? Clean this look. You know, they don't care. I'm telling the guy I want to clean. See, he's got scratches everywhere. You shouldn't have that on a brand new fence, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to touch it up and tell him. And they got a brand new house. Look at this, all scratched up. You're paying for a nice job, not, you know, crap work. This was happening. So I think it looks good with squares. I like the look. This this guy wants to take it off. I said, no, nope, leave it. Take it off. It's gonna be be a nightmare. So once you take it off, you're gonna now you have a beam here. You know, it all kind of looks really good. Inside for a quick second. So these are the doors we're putting in. They're big glass, frosted glass. That's the way I get some of the reels on already. Wow, it looks so different now with reels. Wow. A little bit flimsy. This will be privacy here, so it'll be up, I don't know, five, six feet up. Privacy. So my neighbors can't stare at me. Same with the other side. When I sell the house, I don't want people staring at me. Especially from up that. That's my bedroom up there, so they can. I just don't like people staring. Okay, we'll keep moving here. I'm gonna grab this table while I'm here. Okay, it's 
Mountain. That's where I got the bikes last time. If you watch my video, I wasn't able to get the table. Yeah, those guys, railing guys. I can't believe people are so so lazy or just they do crap work. He wanted to put this rail in crooked, super crooked, like an inch and a half gap almost. I said, no, that's crap. I said, why don't you move the mid center post? He said, oh, then I'll put a slider in. Well, why don't you think of a slider in the first place? Slider is a little leg that cuts the leg off and puts a slider so it goes up and down. Then he puts a screw in. So if I wasn't there, it would look like total crap. And then I said, the railing's a little flimsy, it's long. He said, oh, we'll put a support on it then. Okay, well, if I would have talked to him about it, he would not do it. So he's gonna, I told him about two in there. It's a little bracket, it kind of goes like this. You know, that's a big span there. You know, what if someone's, I'm saying, if someone's drunk, which probably not. Look, it's way through a stop sign. You need to look, should do stop sign. Uh, if you're drunk or, you know, tipsy or slip or fall, you know, the rail's only so strong, you know what I'm saying? At least with added support, make it stronger. Anyways, okay, we're going to the yard there to load some stuff up. It's already 12, 16, close at 2 o'clock. I had to babysit these guys. You know, that's what problems. Same with that guy. He's, I told him put screws in the plywood, glue and screws. It doesn't do that. Just use this, a stapler and the moisture bubble the plywood so plywood on deck is popping up there's, a, there's another deck underneath there and he was put he, he couldn't glue it to it because it had a coating on it so he said okay I'll go through its plywood and, and then you know so anyways it obviously was a fail now I'm stuck with it you know $8,000 deck that's a piece of crap but I can't do nothing right now because winter time so I have to let, let it sit for a while sit till summertime or springtime anyways I'll have to peel it back or something. Something has to be done there. Peel it back and then, I don't know, we'll see. I just wonder if I could put some sort of, uh, like a concrete on top. Like a, like a paver, but then I could, then I won't see the warping in the plywood, right? So I don't know, I'll have to see what happens there. But right now, like I say, with the weather, it's so damp. That's a problem. The moisture goes right through, goes to through everything. If the guy would use screws and glue, I think it would have been okay, right? Now the three inch ply which just warps like crazy. It's thin. Should have been minimum half inch. But I relied on him. He said out three eighths. I said, okay, if that's good, no problem. But no, I should next time should have think, right? Anyways, let's keep moving. Okay, it's time to fill the van up. Kind of run behind time. Not gonna be able to process very much, maybe just a couple things. So, I throw everything in. This stuff's all ready, anyways. If I can do a couple microwaves, maybe. Just two o'clock comes really fast. Especially on a Saturday when you're trying to take a you know, sleep in or something, right? Should be an okay load still. Finishing carpenter, the door you know, the door was a little tight or something. So you want to some advice? <laughs> Dining room door, no, um, living room door was three, three quarters. So you could take some drywall out or something. Let's see whatever you have to do.
Yeah, I talked to Ken from Scrap Bongo. He said uh, he put a video up yesterday, so if you guys haven't seen it, check it out. He went scrapping in Vancouver. Different area than, than what I did, but he did get some stuff. Steel. But he said it was kind of hit and miss there because, you know, there's other people doing it too, right? Need to get a few things, I guess. It fills up pretty good. Quite a bit of stuff here. Just scrap it the way it is. Actually, got a nice transformer. Actually, we'll just uh, pop it open quickly. Someone tried already opening it. Some of the screws are loose. Got a nice heat sink too. It doesn't feel too heavy, but there's stuff in it. See, this is pretty nice there. So I see you. It's a lot of plastic here.
Maybe nothing there, see? Not even worth. It's a little copper recovery, but that's about it. Basically that thing there. Chip there. The rest can go shred. Oh, it's got a cassette. Meditations for manifesting. Meditations for manifesting. Dr. Wayne D. Dreyer. Manifesting. What do you that mean? The transformer is actually pretty heavy. Got a copper band. Almost left it behind. Block transformer, two best items, a little bit of wire, even got a little bit of thread. Okay, let me move on. Doesn't want to go to the dump. I don't normally do fans because just every time I find them they're aluminum. Oh 
Plus, when they got so much plastic, right? This one's all been smashed apart. Just look inside it quickly. Might be copper. Looks like copper. I see it's copper, I would think. Yeah, this one's copper. Forty-seven. Get this microwave done. Yeah, hold on. Wires. It's got thick wires in this one. Won't be a thinner. Even though I don't, I don't got uh, a copper transformer. There's still the transformer is still worth money. Price is low right now, but when the prices bounce back, it should be good. Some don't have this guard here. This one has guard to support there. Be out, but
think that's pretty well all I have right now. A little metal here. Okay, let me just look in the yard a little bit. Hold on. Okay, so I think that's it for my load. Okay, that's my load. Throw it in now. Let's see, I'm thinking, I say about 1200 pounds, I would think. Tires binding up there. I'm thinking probably 1200 pounds, we'll see, hopefully. Okay, okay got that load off. There's actually uh, fairly heavy, uh, not too bad. It was uh, 1360 pounds. I'll show you right here. 1360 right there, 1360. And it was, um, oh, come on, why do that? Okay. So it was a total of, uh, 8597 right there 8597 but it took took off two dollars and 43 cents so that's what I'm saying so it starts those uh, service charge start adding up you know over time right you start doing a lot of scrap over a whole year could add up to quite a bit of money so I think uh, that's it for this video to keep moving on I'm gonna see what the scrap yard looks like here this one's shut down that one's open There's one more here I want to check this one here right here uh, it's a1 Let's see what the how busy their yard is a huge load of aluminum there so I must have dumped a hole maybe a part building down or something I wonder how much they pay they paid every time I asked they always paid a lot lower but eventually they get good if you get good contact right then you can pay more right when you first start out it's you know you don't know where to sell your stuff right you go to all these different scrap yards some pay better some pay lower some buy low grade at a higher some pay less somewhere else but I talked to my main yard and he said uh, they're kind of getting away from uh, selling stuff to China. They're selling stuff, you know, to Europe and, you know, Middle Eastern areas. Um, so it shows you, you can't rely on one country to sell you all your stuff. As soon as they say they have a dispute or you complain about pricing, they shut the doors on you. You have no work. It's just like the same with me working in demolition. I used to rely on one guy. And then you know he hires other people and different things and then you lose your work and then next thing you're sitting with no work that's why it's best to have multiple contacts multiple locations be good with all your scrap yards because one guy screws you the other guy's still gonna be there for you right so it's always good to you know keep that in mind and like you say if it's best to call call your scrap ahead time if you have 500 pounds or something give a call and see what they're paying that day okay guys uh, make sure you uh, share my video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, also, have a great day. Thanks for watching.